So, hi everyone, I'm Zhi Jing from UCSB. Today I will talk about adversary localization against various cameras. This is a joint work with my colleagues and brothers from UCSB and the University of Chicago. Nowadays, digital homes are becoming increasingly commonplace. And recent news have shown that the digital home devices have been the most popular gifts for county citizens. And among these, some of the products are for home security. For example, the various cameras. By live streaming through the various cameras, we are able to keep our eye on our home, even if we are not there. Well, since the devices are so popular, this means that if there is a security vulnerability in their design, then the impact will be large scale. For various devices, one key vulnerability comes from the signal leakage. So the attacker can capture signals and do something bad. In this paper, we focus on the remote localization by the external attackers, and we call it adversarial localization. So basically, the attacker will sniff the various transmissions and locate the behind the device. For example, the virus camera. In this way, a whole burglar is able to avoid the presence of the cameras and plan his intrusion. Clearly, this will be very bad for the home security. To see how practical the attack is, let's first look at requirements. Well, there are multiple ways to capture the signal and do the localization, but which one can be applied in the localization scenario? In the adversary localization scenario. So here we can use the received signal strings, we can use channel state information, unknown arrival, or time of flight. But the, the attack has two basic requirements. First, obviously, it needs to be passive. So this means that the transmitter and the receiver cannot communicate with each other. So we cannot use TOS here since it requires the synchronization between the two devices. And second, the sniffing device should be cheap and portable. Well, in the passive mode, we are able to get the channel state information and animal survival uh, through specialized devices like USRP, but they are expensive. And here, we want to see how the attack would be if the attacker only used a low-cost device such as a Raspberry Pi. So in general, the RSS-based approach will be the best choice in the adversary localization scenario. So the attack will be like this. Here we have a tiger who is trying to locate the hands wall Wi-Fi camera. It can be a human or a robot who just pretends to be passing by the house. And the moving, the attacker sniffs the Wi-Fi transmission and collects the RSS information of the target device. And here, the target device can be separated from the others based on its MAC address, if it is known, or its unique traffic path. And together with the motion sensors, the attacker is able to build a data profile to report the RSS at different locations. And here, please note that the sleeping trace will be limited to the house structure, and in our experiment, it would be a short travel of 25 to 60 meters, which is just around 1 to 2 minutes walk. And then, based on this data profile, the tiger can apply localization techniques to estimate where the target is. Here, we focus on the model based approach uh, because it is robust to the measurement bias. And we also tried other approaches in terms of quality centroid and hyperlocation, but in general, the model based approach works the best. In our experiment, we tested in four popular Wi Fi cameras in terms of eHome, eHome 2, ARMCrest Core HD, and Samsung Smartphone. We placed these devices in rooms of present house, student apartment, and to different office buildings. We allow a tiger to walk on sidewalks or hallways, and here we ask six different people to perform the measurement. 
In total, we have 1.2 thousand work increases with more than 2.6 million RSS and position tables. And here are the localization results. As a result of consistency across different cameras, so here we just mix them together in a quantile bar, uh, we focus on the model-based approach, which gives the best result among all the operators. And from the figure, we can see that sometimes C localization result can be good, say the error is less than 5 meters, uh, which is around the root lab accuracy. But in general, the variance is very large, and the tail can be up to 15 meters. And the large tail still exists, even when we choose the best result among the three operators. But the tail may doesn't matter that much in a non-adversarial uh, localization scenario because really they just care about the median or the average performance. But here, in the universal localization, the tail matters a lot. Because the tail can just be caught in front of the camera and then maybe have you get into jail. So the large localization variance will lead to the uncertain attack results. And clearly, this is not a partial attack. Then how can I cut the tail? So here, we propose a new attack based on machine learning to reduce the localization variance. And given this powerful attack, next, we think one step further to see how practical defenses will work against this attack. And next, we also um, think about, we also study the potential countermeasures. So let's get back to the dark virus. And to deal with this problem, one straightforward approach is to collect more data. But we tried this approach on our data set and found that the accuracy improvement is limited. And besides, collecting more data by wandering around will make this behavior very suspicious. <laughs> the second approach we consider here is a more intelligent way in which we will only use the accurate localization result. So the tablet will first look at the raw measurement data and see and I'll think whether should I use it for localization or not. And a simple analogy to this is when we are buying apples in the supermarket, we will only pick the good apples and leave the bad ones alone. And the same thing here. If the pattern is able to tell the localization accuracy from the data, then it will only break into the drones that has the good result. But the key point here is that how can the attacker tell the localization accuracy? And our idea here is that we assume the good instances that will share similar patterns in terms of certain feature combinations. And if that is true, we can leverage machine learning to separate them. And yeah, we can do that uh, and we achieve this through feature clustering. So for each round of sniffing or the uh, sniffing measurement, we call it an instance. So given a bunch of instances, feature clustering describes a way of finding the key features to separate them. Due to time limits, I'm, I'm not going to talk deep on the details about feature clustering. If you're interested, please talk to me offline or read our paper. So by using feature clustering, the attacker can separate different clusters. But the next question is, how can the attacker tell which cluster is good and which one is bad? And this requires the offline cluster labeling. So basically, the attacker will do the experiment himself by placing the Wi-Fi cameras at different locations and perform the behind-wall localization. In this way, it can have the uh, ground truth location, uh, ground truth result of the localization. And after collecting enough instances, it can do the feature cluster. Since the localization result is known, so the cluster type can be determined. And one interesting thing we found here is that the environment doesn't matter much in the feature cluster. So this means that the offline experiment can be performed at any environment. It doesn't need to be the similar to the ones in the real attack. And 
after this, the attacker can do the online identification. So whenever a new instance comes in, can we compare the pattern similarity between uh, different clusters? If, it, if the pattern is similar to the good cluster, then the localization result is going to be accurate and can we trust the result. And otherwise, can we only trust the result can we give up breaking in or cut more data? And here we apply future class on our data sets. We found that the localization instances naturally fall into three clusters. From the figure, we see there's one cluster uh, which has relatively small localization errors. Uh, it's the error we see the errors bounded by around 60 meters. And for the other two, the errors are pretty large. And we can also identify the key features to separate the clusters. Uh, we found that the, state, the RC standard deviation and the spacing model means that error are the key features. So here the RC standard deviation captures how the RC has changed during the sniffing. And the fitting MAC just measures how well the measurement uh, fits the estimated models. So from the red layer, you can see that the good cluster tends to have high standard degree, RC standard deviation and small fitting MS. To explain this, uh, first from the fitting point of view, uh, in clearly the smaller the areas, the better the result will be. But by look, only looking at the fitting MSC, uh, it, it, do, it doesn't give us a good result. Because here we see another cluster, it has small fitting MSC, but the localization error is large. So here we see the other key feature here is the uh, artist animation. So in this bad cluster, the standard deviation is low, which means that the current measurement coverage is not enough. So in order to have an accurate result, we should have enough uh, measurement coverage. So these two patterns can tell us whether an instance will give us accurate result or not. And to see the effects, we compare the classroom assist uh, results with the basic attacks. From the figure, we see there's a significant improvement and the attack is effective across different environments. Now the errors are all bounded to 6 meters. And further, the attacker can utilize this approach to know when to stop the measurement. For example, it can do the online monitoring of the data quality. If the data quality is sufficient, have you stop? And here we found that it helps to reduce the walking distance by almost 50%. Now we see that the attack is power. It's much powerful than before. Then we think one step further to see how current uh, differences will work in front of this attack. And here we consider two different dif two differences. The first one is transfer power randomization. So basically, the camera will change its transfer power randomly, and this will create noise on the RSS captured by the tiger. And the second defense is to add an extra transmitter. And the second, and the two transmitters will coordinate with each other to make the tiger body hard to separate the transmissions. So the tiger will assume the signal comes from one position, but actually it's not. We mimic these differences by using the RSRP. And here are the localization results. Well, figure testing still is, is still able to identify the accurate or the useful instances, but the percentage decreases when we're using the difference. We see that without the difference, the percent useful instances are 63 percentage. Now with the power randomization, it decreases by half. So, by looking at this, the differences are kind of effective. But unfortunately, the attacker can easily do the countermeasure with the tracking power randomization by adding an extra sniffer. So the two sniffers, they will uh, capture the signal simultaneously, and by subtracting them, we can remove the randomization effect. And now we see that the useful instances increases to over 50%. So in general, 
the two differences are not that effective. So in conclusion, here we propose a new attack in terms of adversarial localization. This attack can achieve the remote localization by just using the vocal device and a short mode. Well, current localization techniques will have large variants. Here we use machine learning techniques to cut the tail and make the attack much more powerful. For future works, there are two ways we are trying to go for. The first one is we will focus on the good incidences and improve the localization results. And the second, we will are going to build your wrong defense. Here, there are multiple ways to do it. For example, we can do the MAC address randomization or the Wi-Fi geofence. But which one can be applied in a realistic study will leave it to future work. Uh, that concludes my talk. I'm happy to take any questions.